We are live and uh, airing our Board of Regents meeting for Del Mar College. It is Tuesday, April 14th. I'm calling the meeting to order and we'll do a roll call for quorum. Regent Adani? Here. Regent Averett? Here. Regent Bennett? Here. Regent Estrada? Here. Regent Hutchinson? Here. Regent Rubel? Here. Regent Salinas? Regent Salinas? We will check with him to see if he'll be joining us. Regent Sherwood? Here. And Regent Scott? So we have uh, eight of the nine regents present. We have a quorum and can conduct business. Due to the health and safety concerns related to the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic crisis, this meeting is being conducted by teleconference and video conference. At least a quorum of the, the board is present and in accordance with the guidance from the Office of the Governor and Attorney General, uh, provisions have been made for the public to participate in this meeting, or to, excuse me, observe this meeting uh, via online video link as well as teleconference uh, link as well. An electronic copy of the agenda was made available to the public in an online fashion uh, and posted accordingly. We have dispensed with our pledge and moment of silence and, and vision statement. We'll return to those regular practices when we meet again in person. Uh, however, we, would, we do have an opportunity for public comment the public was given the opportunity to provide a voicemail comment or written comment to staff by noon today. And I'm going to call on Lorette Williams to let us know whether or not there was any public comment and whether or not uh, she has anything to read for us. Ms. Williams? Yes, Chair, uh, Chairman Scott, there was no public comment submitted for this meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, just a few verbal instructions before we uh, initiate the, uh, the report and the action item for today. Uh, please stay on mute as much as possible so that we minimize background noise. I will give you ample time to unmute uh, your uh, device so that you can participate. I will call upon each board member by name so that you have the opportunity to ask questions or provide comments on both the report as well as uh, the action item for today. I'm going to ask that you please state your name clearly. Uh, I will introduce you, but please state your name clearly as well. Um, and then if there's any questions, I will come back through uh, for a second round and ask if there's any region who has any follow-up questions. Uh, with that, I'm going to ask President uh, Mark, Mark Escamilla to give us a college update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Regents, uh, executive team members, and all those, all others who are on the call, I'm going to begin uh, my statement this morning uh, with a hearty thank you uh, to all the employees and um, certainly the regents, uh, their students, and their families for all that uh, you have gone through in dealing with uh, this unprecedented um, situation um, that has overtaken our entire um, the entire world, actually. And there are many things that we've been asking of um, of our employee, and we have asked for extraordinary. Uh, we've asked them to take extraordinary measures in changing the way we do things here at the college. And for that, uh, as president of the college, I want to extend my heartfelt uh, thanks and gratitude for all that, we've, that you all have gone through. That being said, I'm going to read a statement so bear with me as I'm going to focus on my screen. Since the COVID-19 crisis began, Delmar College has taken unprecedented steps to ensure the safety of our students and employees and their families. We began watching the situation closely in early February. During spring break, discussions among our leadership resulted in the extension 
of the break, which we announced on March 12th. Multiple meetings followed with the executive team, the college-wide leadership, the crisis management team, and the instructional continuity team. We assessed the worsening situation and began making tough but necessary decisions that have led us to where we are today. The foremost concern in all decisions has been the health and safety of everyone in the Del Mar College. That will not change. Circumstances have required us to shift the way we deliver instruction, at least temporarily, while we stay true to our mission. In accordance with the COVID-19 directives from the Center for Disease Control and the local coverage, such as social distancing and stay at home, we have transitioned thousands of spring and summer courses to, online, to an online format. These include both credit and continuing education courses. And certainly that does include the, the, the current uh, semester. Transitioned courses got underway on March 30th. In some courses, only lection por lab portions were transitioned and lab or clinical portions were adjusted with special accommodations. All our course schedules for every semester have been impacted, including redesigning the sequencing of courses and modality. Our faculty have worked relentlessly to revise the curriculum and programs to meet these changes. It has been a Herculean task. We're in the process of identifying more courses that can be tr transitioned to online in order to maximize opportunities for our students. In other developments, decisions were made and we're proceeding with the registration for May Mester, summer, and fall 2020 courses. The May Mester term will be May 7th through the 22nd. Summer one will start May 26th. Summer two will start July 6th. And the fall 2020 registration will uh, registration rather will start April 22nd. Excuse me, April 20th. Excuse me. The spring 2020 commencement ceremony, previously scheduled for May 15th, has been postponed. We are working on on a rescheduled virtual commencement, and we'll share details as soon as they are available. There will also be considerations for a makeup. Uh, face uh, face to face graduation that we are also working on so stay tuned there as well despite the multitude of challenges the pandemic has created our faculty and staff have risen to the occasion to keep our students education on track admissions outreach enrollment uh, enrollment management advising registrar's office business office the student affairs office financial aid security IT phys physical facilities etc have all come together in great, great fashion, strong fashion, in support of our students and our employees here at the college. A few examples that I'd like to highlight is between March 15th and 31st, first, IT, the IT department's Viking help desk handled 1,636 phone calls, and I know that number has grown, responded to 1,652 emails, has loaned out more than 140 laptops to students and has procured uh, another almost $160,000 in hardware and software to keep students connected to the classes and the college. The Del Mar College Foundation has identified $225,000 in emergency fund, uh, assistance funds to mitigate the COVID-19 impact on students. Launching an online giving program as well to raise funds for emergency assistance. And if you've seen social media and the, and the mission's uh, site, you'll, you'll, you can see their advertisement and the employees uh, conducting um, that program. Additionally, we have extended mission payment deadlines to help the financial strain many of our students are experiencing due to COVID-19. We continue to closely follow safety guide, guidelines established by the CDC the federal and state governments, and of course, our local government. At the federal level, we anticipate that the CARES Act 
will provide substantial financial relief to the college. We are unpacking that, that legislation and we know that there will be substantial infusion of, of resources that will go directly to our students. We are monitoring the developments of this two trillion dollars, uh, two trillion, two trillion stimulus, two trillion million, <laughs> two million, excuse me, two trillion dollars, it's just hard to imagine, trillion dollar stimulus bill resulting from the coronavirus pandemic. We're also working closely with Governor Greg Abbott's office, the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board, and the Texas Association of Community Colleges. We communicate with, with one agency or another every day of the week regarding the various issues related to COVID-19. I've personally been on the phone with our Commissioner of Higher Ed, uh, Mr. Um, Dr. Harrison Keller, as well as Lieutenant Governor uh, Dan Patrick as soon as last week. Locally, and I, I and our leadership are in regular contact with the Corpus Christi City Manager's Office and the Nueces County Judge's Office. Every decision we make is in alignment with the directives, directives such as the stay-at-home order in effect for county residents through the April 30th deadline. Although access to Del Mar College campuses is restricted, our physical facility staff is focused on ensuring our facilities are properly clean, sanitized, and maintained. Decontamination efforts started during spring break and are on schedule uh, and are scheduled to continue regularly as long as needed. This includes cleaning and disinfecting classrooms, offices, restrooms, hallways, and all touch points. The Environmental Health and Safety Office is also providing disinfectant fog for some areas regularly used by essential Del Mar College staff. Del Mar College remains open for business on an online basis online only basis and employees continue to work remotely. We have about 150 employees college-wide as essential personnel who are allowed to access our facilities via our security department. All essential employees letters designated them as such and signed by myself. Our leadership team are meeting daily, virtually I might add, to assess the ongoing situation and plan our operations accordingly. Currently, we do not have a firm date for the resumption of normal operations. Several projects that are ongoing at, on the, at this time include the for spring 2021 as it is being reviewed and to align with eight week and online course conversions. And I think that's the fall 2021, I should say. Construction projects at the south side and the, uh, on the south side and the pilot plan expansion on the west campuses are continuing on or ahead of schedule. I just visited both both uh, locations yesterday. Actually, I've been on a regular basis, but yesterday most recently. The business and finance department continue to plan the budget for next academic year and meet the needs for the year. Process continues on the enterprise resource planning, the, our ERP system. Um, our quality enhancement pr plan, pathways, our SACS reaffirmation process, all of those things continue. And in addition to basic operations of our instruction, uh, I want you all to know that uh, there are many, many other major initiatives at the, at the project that are not missing a beat. We're experiencing a sea change in the way we educate students at Del Mar College. We all hope that this is a temporary shift but online learning is the primary method we must embrace for the time being. In the coming weeks and months, we'll proceed with online and hybrid courses as we migrate back to a traditional face-to-face -face with our traditional face-to-face -face classes, depending on the evolution of the situation. More adjustments are ahead, so we must remain flexible and keep our options wide open. Our top priority will always be the health and safety of our employees, our students, and our community. I'm, I'm open for questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Escamilla. Uh, Regent Rivas, do you have any questions or comments for Dr. Escamilla? You're on mute, Regent Rivas, can you unmute us? 
Am I unmuted now? There you go. Okay, Dr. Scamia, we talked before about the classes that are not able to do face-to-face, -face, such as welding, cosmetology. How, how are we dealing with those types of situations? Yeah, so currently we are putting every bit of those courses the, that we can online. And so every one of our courses um, essentially have a, a large uh, or a proportionate um, uh, lecture component and so as much as, as we possibly can is being converted to online you know our hopes are that uh, we're going to get our students through all the skills based uh, classes and uh, what we want to do is remind um, all of our students uh, who are in those situations that we will work with them in order to complete their goals this semester whether it's com just if it's completing the, the, uh, the class or completing the class for graduation. We're going to work with them. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Revis. Anything else? All right, Regent Adamu, do you have any questions or comments? No? Uh, no, I don't have any questions right now. Thank you, sir. Dr. Sherwood, any questions or comments for Dr. Escamilla? Uh, just that we appreciate all that uh, he and the staff are doing to make all of this work. We know it's a tremendous uh, challenge. Thank you, Dr. Sherwood. Regent Abert, do you have any questions or comments? Yes, just thank you, Dr. Escamilla, to you and the faculty and the staff um, for getting the students and, and everybody through this, for caring for each other. Um, these are truly extraordinary circumstances. And um, I don't have any doubt that you are doing everything possible to make sure that folks are cared for and healthy, but also educated in the best possible manner right now. So thank you. Regent Bennett, do you have any questions or comments? No, I don't. Thank you, sir. Regent Estrada, do you have any questions or comments? Regent Estrada, you might be on mute. Okay, we'll come back to you if we need to. Regent Hutchison, do you have any questions or comments? I would echo the, the comments um, with our congratulations for the efforts you've been able to make and also to everyone from the students uh, to the faculty, staff, everyone on their being flexible and understanding what a moving target this is. I think that's the difficulty is that there is no way for you to say this is how things are going to progress and what the timeline is. Uh, but for us to know that you are on top of it and, and understanding how everybody is stressed is, is very, very important. So thank you for all of that. But no questions. Thank you, Regent Hutchinson. Regent Salinas, thank you for joining us. I know you had some trouble logging in. Uh, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, no, no, I don't. You know, I just, I guess, uh, I'm just like everybody, you know, I think that uh, we're doing everything possibly, Dr. Scamilla and everybody trying to do everything possibly to make everything safe for everybody, and uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Regent Estrada, I'll come back to you to see if you have any comments. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Okay. No, I just wanted to ask Dr. Scamia if our attendance, if most of the students are still continuing with their classes, or do we have many that have dropped their classes? You know, that's my question. And again, thank you, Dr. Scamia, for all you're doing. But can you answer that question for me? If we still have our students uh, on board. Yes. Uh, the short answer is yes. We have the vast majority of our students on board. We are triaging any prospective students who are thinking about dropping their courses uh, on an individualized basis. Um, those students will receive phone calls uh, from our uh, advisors and counselors as well as faculty. I know there's all sorts of all different facets of employees that are reaching out to any of our students. Um, you know the biggest number that I've heard and this was about about seven days ago of students that were uh, considering dropping was in, in the uh, around the range of about 50 students 53 54 students now I, I believe that number probably has grown um, I, I don't think it's grown considerably 
um, more than that, but 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 we do know that these are the tougher times, as as we know the students are um, experiencing um, more difficulty with employment and all these other things. We think the problem is going to get uh, worse before it gets better. We think there's going to be more students, but what we're doing. Uh, just as I did on the way over here, uh, there was a couple of students that were calling the business office that uh, Mr. Garcia and I were talking about. I said, let's let's make sure that those students have individualized attention so that we can specifically assess their situation before they consider dropping. A lot of times our students um, are, you know, struggling over to make uh, struggling over issues to make these uh, calls personally. And sometimes it just takes us putting, you know, our, uh, putting a hand out there on their shoulder, so to speak, not, not, not literally, but, you know, reaching out to these students and giving them an opportunity to hold on. And with these emergency funds, uh, sometimes if the, if the situation is a uh, financial nature, of a financial nature, we'll have those kind of uh, resources out there for them. Uh, and there's more of that coming from the federal government. So we're doing everything we can to minimize uh, those the, the drops for those um, those those students who who are considering dropping. Thank you, and I appreciate all that you're doing, Dr. Scamia. I really do. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Estrada. Thank you very much. Uh, if there's any additional questions, please let me know. Or you can obviously communicate directly with Dr. Escamilla via text or email and, and call. Uh, he certainly is available to each of us individually. Uh, we'll now move on to the pending business item. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, you see on our pending list, we have moved a number of things uh, into May for our May meeting. At this point in time, we do not know guidance regarding uh, whether or not we will be able to have a face-to-face -face meeting in May. Uh, we will uh, continue to hold that date because in one way, shape, or form, we will have a meeting on our regular meeting date in May. It's just a question of whether or not it will be via video conference or via face-to-face. -face. Uh, we will have to do some additional... Uh, we will not be able to keep our agenda as light as we have the last two meetings. We will have some things that we'll have to work through uh, from both a reporting standpoint as well as an action item. Uh, but we're working on those things with Dr. Eskimi and with his executive team uh, to determine the best way to roll those out over the next several months. Hoping we can meet face to face at this point, I think it's probably not likely, uh, but if that, that opportunity does present itself, we will do so with appropriate social distancing. Uh, Dr. Eskimi, do you have anything to add on our pending items? No. Uh Chair, Chairwoman Scott, you you uh, you've got right to the point. Um, there, there, those items, only the necessary items, I think, in, in coming months, will be coming to the board. Uh, unfortunately, we will we won't have the opportunity to do the more celebratory things and so forth. So it'll be a straightforward business uh, format in, in coming uh, in coming uh, board meet uh, in. in coming months for the board meetings. Um, but I will add that the, the technology that we're using today, uh, I think, will also evolve slightly. And, and, uh, and uh, we're going to get even better um, at this methodology for, for the execution of the board meetings. Thank you. Regent Bennett, do you have any questions about our pending item list? No, I don't. Regent Hutchinson, do you have any questions? I do not. Regent Estrada, do you have any questions or comments about our pending item list? No, ma'am. Thank you. Regent Reader? No, I'm okay. Regent Adami? I do not. Thank you. Regent Salinas, do you have any questions or comments about our pending item list? No, ma'am. Thank you. Regent Averett? No, thank you. Regent Sherwood? No, I don't. Thank you. I apologize for that. It, it seems a little bit cumbersome, but I think that's the best way for us to work through questions and comments is to do it one at a time. So thank you for your indulgence and your patience on that. Uh, we will now move into our action item for today's meeting. Uh, Dr. Escamilla is going to introduce both the staff and consultants that we have on the line uh, to discuss the uh, possible action related to authorizing issuance 
of Series 2020A and Series 2020B Delmar College District Limited Tax Bonds for the purposes of financing portions of the capital improvement programs approved by the voters in November 4th, 2014 and November 8th, 2016, respectively. Dr. Escamilla? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Regents, uh, we have for your consideration today um, a, a package of two, two separate packages uh, to move forward uh, in the issuance of um, the remainder of both the 2014 and the 2016 bonds respectively. Um, these projects uh, have begun, have, have, have hit mile uh, benchmarks along the way uh, of, of certain levels of completion and um, it is time to move forward with the next phase um, or the next phases of, of the 14 bond and then just a continuation of the, of the current phase of, uh, of the 16 bond. That being said, um, the, um, the members who are here joining us to facilitate this conversation uh, are all on the call, I'm glad to say. Um, our special guests uh, that are here joining us are Tom Spurgeon, he's our bond counsel, long t long time bond counsel counselor for Delmar College, and then our bond advisor is Mr. Dave Gordon, and both are on the call. From the executive team and the business office, uh, we have uh, both Raul Garcia here, our CFO, we have John Stribus here uh, from physical facilities to answer any questions we may have there. Uh, and I know uh, Mr. Alfonso uh, will help us uh, with any any sort of historical context, uh, contextual information if that's what's needed, and I certainly will as well. As well as our business office uh, um, members, uh, Mr. John Johnson and Dr. Kathy West. Um, that being said, um, I'd like to uh, hand uh, the microphone over to uh, Mr. Raul Garcia, our CFO, so he can tee us up. Mr. Garcia, you're muted, so you need to unmute yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Chair, Mr. President, members of the board, and members of the public audience, I wish you great health during this uncertain time. We are not the next funding phase for the college's capital plan that started with the voter-approved bond elections on November 4th, 2014 for the East-West Campus projects and November 8th, 2016 for the new South Campus. Over the last six years, the college has diligently been working on what you see today are the general academic, the music, the workforce development, and the emerging technology buildings. Thanks to the voters, the board, and members of the college, these building additions will continue to foster the college's quality of instruction and student uh, support services. Today's agenda item includes to build upon the same approved capital plan for the construction renovation and or repurposing of facilities with the current contract obligations north of $128 million. Our presenters for today is Mr. Dave Gordon from Estrada Hinojosa and Tom Spurgeon with McCall Hill, Parkhurst and Hurton who will describe the current bond market conditions, <coughs> bond obligation profile a preliminary bond profile, the 2020 A and B issues, a calendar of the financing activities, and the two bond resolutions. Before we get started, I want to brief you on their impressive backgrounds. Mr. Gordon is a senior managing director with over 30 years of professional experience, including 15 years in public finance. He has been involved in numerous municipal clients, including airports, cities, counties, higher education institutions, school districts, toll road authorities, and transit authorities. He has served as a lead banker on approximately 500 financial advisory or underwriting transactions with a combined par value of over $20 billion. Mr. Spurgeon is a partner at his firm with extensive experience as bond counsel for traditional municipal financing uh, for various political subdivisions in Texas, as well as private activity bond transactions. He has also served as counsel to the underwriters on many types of bond transactions. His clients include various cities, county, school districts, junior college districts, river authorities, water districts, and conduit issuers of private activity bonds. 
I will now turn it over to Mr. Gordon. Mr. Gordon, would you make sure that you're not muted, please? All right. I think I've been unmuted by the by Jessica. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, thank you, Raul, for passing that up for me. Um, uh, first of all, let me congratulate you on um, doing such a, an outstanding job so far on the uh, uh, the presentation um, and and how the the meeting is being addressed. I've been on a couple of these now. That everybody's having to transition over to virtual meetings and. Uh, I think that uh, you guys are have figured this out right from the beginning. So congratulations on that. So I've got uh, a presentation on the screen for everybody, and uh, my intention then is to go through, um, talk about the market a little bit, talk about the, the college's debt, and then talk about the preliminary plan of finance, which includes the schedule and the, and the uh, underwriting team. And then I'll turn it over to Tom Spurgeon, who will review the uh, the resolutions and, and the parameters that the uh, the board would be approving today. Um, so, Jessica, if you could move to page one, please. So, everything we've seen going on in terms of uh, all the um, uh, the changes in the economy, uh, the social distancing, the stay at home, and all that uh, has translated into um, pretty significant disruption in um, the capital markets, including the municipal bond market. Um, Mr. Gordon, the, um, this, yes, ma'am. Could you please identify each? Um each page that you are on by the title on that page, not just a page number, and that way we can make sure that those folks who are listening on the telephone are on the correct page. Absolutely. So we're on page one. It says 30-year um, AAA MMD versus 30-year Treasury um, since 2000 at the top of the page. Uh, as I mentioned, there's been a, a, a significant amount of disruption in the capital markets uh, since um, uh, the current pandemic uh, took place. Uh, this screen, um, just want to make two points here. One is that, uh, having said that, we are in a, still a significantly low interest rate environment, as you can see by kind of the downward trajectory of the um, uh, of interest rates from uh, from left to right. But also, I'll, I'll point your attention to the, the decoupling or kind of different directions that um, treasuries, shown in green, have taken since the, uh, the pandemic really um, took hold uh, versus AAA MMD. AAA MMD is, uh, is a benchmark index that's used in the municipal market to basically um, give you a kind of a gauge of how municipal tax exempt credits trade. Uh, and you can see how those decoupled. We, we saw a significant flight to quality and uh, rates and treasuries um, drop precipitously uh, at the same time um, uh, municipal rates um, spiked. Um, having said that, um, we hit the, kind of the bottom of the market uh, on 3.9 uh, on March 9th, and since then we've actually um, improved significantly. Uh, this presentation was prepared on 4.6, and we've uh, improved by about 50 basis points since, since then. So again, in a, um, a good market um, in terms of um, coming out of what was a, a fairly perilous time. Uh, we did see the bond markets relatively locked up for about two weeks after the pandemic really took hold. Uh, since then, um, transactions are, are getting done, albeit at a slower pace. Uh, we did see a Collin County um, Community College District transaction, a $303 million transaction that sold last week. Um, and there's, a, for example, a, a new Bronzeville utility system, $81 million transaction in the market uh, today. We can turn to page two. Uh, it's entitled uh, AAA MMD History Since 2000. Um, this is a chart that it, uh, for board members that have been there for a while have seen before. It's a little bit busy, but I think it says a lot. Um, again, AAA MMD is a benchmark index used in the municipal bond market. Uh, this chart, the vertical bars represent the range of rates for each maturity, uh, a, a one-year maturity all the way up to a 30-year maturity, the range of rates since 2000. Uh, the green, um, I'm sorry, the blue boxes in the center are the average over that period, and then the green diamonds are where we are today. Um, as I mentioned, uh, actually, this this presentation was uh, prepared over a week ago. We've, we've actually improved 50 basis points since then, or, or half a percent, so we're even lower today. So again, even though there's a lot of um, turmoil in the marketplace, uh, we have um, gotten to a better place, and interest rates are overall uh, very attractive. 
if we can turn to the next page, I'll just show you the page three. I'll show you the last the slide on the market. This shows 10-year, 20-year, and 30-year AAA MMD rates since 2020, uh, since basically since the beginning of this year. And again, you can kind of see we were in a steady um, kind of lowering of interest rates throughout the first part of the year, hit the bottom on March 9th, and then saw significant um, turbulence um, during the period of time um, before some of the Fed uh, programs were rolled out. And since then, if you if you were to follow those lines on the on the far right hand side, they've continued to trail down about fifty basis points again since this uh, presentation has been prepared. So that's an update on what's going on in the municipal bond market. If we turn to page four, <coughs> so just a a, um, a brief summary of the uh, college's outstanding general obligation um, debt. This is your tax supported debt. It's supported by your your interest in sinking or your debt um, tax. Uh, you can see um, both graphically and then uh, on the chart on the left, uh, the college has um, uh, 219 million of geo bonds outstanding. Um, your debt profile basically is that you have uh, debt service payments of about a little over $19 million um, through 2023. And then you can see it drops off significantly to a little over 15 million for three years and then drops off significantly again after that. Um, that is an important factor that, that I'll point to later when we talk about the plan of finance, because I'd like to uh, uh, propose uh, taking advantage of that significant drop-off that you're going to see in, in three years to try to mitigate any tax rate impact. Um, I will also note that um, although your, your debt goes out for 28 years, um, it's fairly uh, rapid amortization. Uh, in the first 10 years, it would be about 37%. Uh, and then uh, in, in 20 years, it would be 86% of, of your current debt will be amortized. Um, you do have uh, very high ratings. Uh, you've got a, a double A plus from Fitch, a double A two from Moody's, and a, a double A from S and P. Those are extremely strong investment grade credit ratings. Um, you know there certainly is going to be some stress and a number of things that um, you're going to have to work through as we talk to the rating agencies and as you work through um, the issues related to the pandemic. But hopefully uh, we can maintain those ratings. But again, those are extremely strong credit ratings and certainly uh, um, a testament to what uh, good things you've done there in terms of managing your finances. Turning on to page five, this is a um, listing of the combined fee revenue debt that's outstanding. You have one series of bonds remaining. Uh, you may recall we restructured this debt and refinanced it a number of years ago. Uh, now it's level debt uh, just shy of $2 million a year uh, from 2020 through 2028. Uh, ratings are slightly lower because the pledge is different. Um, but uh, again, still strong investment grade credit ratings. M moving on to page six, this is just a summary of the, uh, the total bond programs to date. Uh, you can see the 2014 and 2016 elections for the East and West Campus and then the South Campus, uh, respectively. Uh, again, $157 million and $139 million bond elections. And then you can see um, the, the various um, series of debt that we've issued. Uh, on the 2014 election, for example, we issued debt in 2015, 16, and then we had the 2018 A bonds. And then moving over to the next column, you can see that we issued debt in 2017, and then also had the 2018 B bottoms. So the remaining unissued portion of, of voter authorization from each of those are, are just over 25 million and just shy of 68 million, respectively. Uh, for a combined um, uh, remaining authorization of, of almost $93 million. Moving on to the next page. Uh, this is uh, page seven. Uh, it's tax rate impact. This is prior to the issuance of the 2020 obligations. And I'll just kind of explain this chart from left to right. And then uh, what we'll see on the next page is we'll basically drop in uh, the pro forma debt service for the new transaction to give you an idea of the tax rate impact. So in column A on the left-hand side, uh, you can see we're starting with your fees-adjusted taxable assessed valuation uh, of just shy of $26.5 billion. Uh, and then you can see uh, if we go to column B, there's some uh, projected growth rates uh, as provided by the, um, the college. Um, obviously, to the extent that your assessed valuation grows more or less than that, that does impact the tax rate that's derived. Column C is your existing debt service. And again, this is, uh, you've got uh, over $19 million a year in debt service through 2023, and then it drops off uh, fairly significantly after that. Columns D and, and J, I'm sorry, columns D and I are where we'll 
we'll talk about it on the next page and drop in the profile of the debt service for the new obligations. Column K is um, the um, calculated tax rate. Um, the current tax rate for the INS is 6.94 cents. Um, the functions that basically determine that, of course, are your, um, your assessed valuation. But again, the more the assessed valuation grows, uh, the lower the, the calculated tax rate will be. Um, then it's your existing debt service uh, your, and your new debt service. Return over to page eight. This is uh, the pro forma debt service and, and tax rate impact after uh, issuance of the new debt. Um, <coughs> columns a, a through C are the same. So uh, D through I is what I'll focus on in particular. Um, again, we have the two series of obligations, the 2020A and the 2020B. Uh, the 2020A are from the uh, 2014 election. And if you'll see just under column E, you'll, you'll notice that the, the project fund amount there is uh, 25266794 million, um, We actually would be able to sell bonds with a par value of less than that um, and, and still finance that amount uh, just because the bonds would be sold at a premium. Um, the uh, true interest cost that I've modeled here is 4.3%. That was 100 basis points, or 1% over where rates were on 4.1. And um, I'm being pretty conservative here, just because uh, with the extreme volatility, particularly when we look back uh, a little over a week ago when this presentation was prepared, uh, we wanted to make sure that it didn't surprise anybody with uh, rates that, that were too low here. Um, if, again, if I were to run this today, and, and we were able to sell this today, we would be um, under 100 basis points lower in terms of the overall rate that we could sell this. Um, you can see then, if you, if you work down in column D, you'll notice there's no principal for the first um, three years. And again, that's to take advantage of the fact that you have a pretty significant drop in your existing debt service. Um, so that the, um, uh, we're, we're pushing back the principal a little bit, otherwise the tax rate impact will be, will be more in those uh, first couple of years. Um, column E is the interest, F is the, um, the total debt service, and then Similarly, on columns G through I, again, you'll notice this is the um, 2020B bonds for the 2016 election. Uh, the total project funds are 67,686,186. And again, the same, the same rate, same structure. Um, delivery for both series of obligations is um, right now expected on June 30th. And you can see, see the same structure basically with um, no principal for the first three years. Moving over to um, column K, again, your current tax rate uh, on the INS side is about is 6.941 cents. Um, using these rates, which again, I hopefully are significantly higher than you'll be able to sell it, uh, the tax rate impact next year would be about 1.9 cents. Um, I actually just ran this just a bit ago. Um, if I were to take out the 100 basis points, it would be under 1.6 cents. And really, since then, we've, we've improved more than that. So I would expect that unless the market goes completely uh, in the wrong direction, uh, it should be more like 1.6 cents or, or less that you would be able to um, issue the debt in terms of the tax rate impact next year. And then you'll notice again that the tax rate um, impact, um, uh, the tax rate that's, that's required does kind of go down over the next couple of years. Uh, that has partly to do with the fact that you have some assessed valuation growth that's programmed here, uh, but then after 2023, um, it, it drops off um, significantly because of the, the drop in your, in your um, existing debt service. Moving on to page nine. This is a, a preliminary uh, schedule of events in terms of what we need to do to take the bonds to market. Um, so again, we're here on, on April 14th. Um, you'll have, you have two resolutions that Tom will talk about in a minute that you'd be passing today. Uh, we would then work on a, what's called a preliminary official statement or an offering document. Um, we would also talk to the rating agencies and have the ratings um, reviewed and, and hopefully affirmed. Um, and we would then work with the underwriters um, to get the transaction ready for, for sale, including having a due diligence call on or around May 20th. Um, then assuming that the market conditions um, um, warranted and we, we thought that there was a stable market and we could sell the bonds at reasonable rates. Uh, we expect the price of the bonds um, on June 30th. Uh, the pricing process is where the underwriters go out to the market, uh, talk to individual um, institutions and, and, uh, and retail investors, and basically 
um, come up to with an agreement in terms of what the final um, um, coupons and yields will be for the obligations. And then the uh, pricing officers that are included in the delegation you do today would, would sign those documents and we would close on June 30th. This would give you time to, to, to set your tax rate for next year uh, and include this debt in that calculation. And then finally, uh, before we take any questions, if we move on to page 10, this is the finance team participants that we're proposing. Again, Estrada Hinojosa's financial advisor, McCall Parkerson Horton, is bond counsel. Uh, we're pro proposing using the same underwriters that uh, were on the 2018 transactions. Uh, these underwriters also um, in, in different syndicates have been on most of your transactions over the last number of years. Uh, Wells Fargo would be senior manager, Crossbank, uh, Huntington Capital Markets, that's the former Hutchison Shockey Early. Um, they merged um, not too long ago. Mesero Financial and RBC Capital Markets. Um, and then Underwriters Council would be you know, selected by uh, the underwriters, and then the paying agent would be uh, Bank of New York Mellon, who is uh, the firm that you use now. So that's a lot of information that I've uh, um, put out. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take those now before turning anything over to Tom. Thank you, yes, Mr. Board, we will, um, I'll out give the opportunity for the Regents to ask questions. I do have one to start. This is Regent uh, Chairman Scott. Um, you talked about the, uh, uh, you did a quick uh, refigure of the tax rate increase to 1.6 based on recent market uh, activity since you prepared this presentation. Uh, what are the stop gaps if as you described in your narrative, uh, if there is significant change or if there is a, a uh, worst case scenario for the bond markets, uh, do right. we not go out for sale? Do we, uh, what, what's, what's the internal mechanism so that we have some assurances uh, about if, if the markets go in, in the direction we do not want them to go? So um, to clarify a little bit, I, I ran, um, um, this analysis in terms of the uh, the rates that are included in here on April 1st. At the time, I included 100 basis points of cushion in those rates. Since April 1st, however, rates have actually come down 50 basis points. Um, so when I did the quick analysis earlier, I took out the 100 basis points, but it didn't give us credit for the 50 basis points. So really, rates if we go out today would be 150 basis points lower than this. Um, again, what I the one point under 1.6 cents, it was 1.5 something. Um, was actually just taking out the 100 basis points. So um, there's a significant amount of conservatism in here just because, again, um, we don't really know um, with all the volatility what's happening. Having said all that, what is in the, um, um, the parameters resolutions today, I believe, and Tom, correct me if I'm mistaken here, is that we've got that the rate has to be lower than 4.5%. Um, um, so if the rate is not lower than 4.5%, then we would have to come back to the regions. Uh, we could also restructure the debt slightly. What I've modeled here is 25-year debt. If we did do, for example, 20-year debt, um, that would be another way to, to lower the rate slightly. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Regent Adami, do you have any questions? Um, no, no, I don't at this time. Thank you. Regent Averett, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Regent Bennett, do you have any questions or comments? I do. Uh, what, what was the rate on the last issue that we, we put out? Uh, well, we'll get that in two seconds here. The last bonds were actually sold at a uh, true interest cost of uh, 3.9 cents. I'm sorry, 3.9%. Uh, so, you know, uh, if, if we take out the conservatism that I have right now, if we could get these done today, we would actually be selling them at, at lower interest rates than uh, we did back in 2018. Theoretically, we've about hit the bottom of the bond market, haven't we? Exactly. If you look back again on, on, on March 9th of this year, that was the low in the bond market for basically forever. Um, you know, so we're, we're, we're above those lows now, but we're still, you know, a quite low interest rate environment. Again, if you reflect back to one of the earlier charts that I showed you, that I showed you rates on every maturity since 2000, uh, that was on page two. Um, 
basically we're, we're near the bottom now since this chart was was um uh, piled um interest rates have dropped 50 basis points okay e excellent timing thank you thank you Mr. bennett regent estrada do you have any questions or comments no ma'am <laughs> Regent Husterson, do you have any questions or comments? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Regent Rivas? I, the only question I have, Tom, is we, we, ha we have to go back before the bond, before the rating agencies for an upgrade in our rating. You mentioned that we had some pretty good ratings already. Uh, how do they determine that? What, what's their process now? They used to come down to interview and uh, where do they get their basis to give the a good or bad rating um, what we'll do is we'll do um, an online uh, discussion with each of the rating agencies uh, each one has slightly different criteria that they look at um, um, however uh, principally what they're going to look at are uh, your um, uh, ability and willingness to pay and in this particular case this is um, tax supported debt um, you have a, you know a broad um, area in which you um, uh, you levy a tax um, and um, you have, uh, you know, a relatively wealthy area, again, a broad, um, diverse economy. Um, and you certainly have been able to, you're, you're well within uh, the tax rate limitations that you have. Um, you've got some significant um, ability to, to raise taxes if you need to. And in fact, you've shown the, um, the willingness to do that whenever the case uh, is warranted. Uh, so overall, the, the situation, um, it looks, looks good from that perspective. Um, obviously, um, they are going to take into consideration the stresses that the college is going in right now. Um, certainly there could be some impacts to the local economy. Um, there could be impacts as you discussed earlier with regard to um, um, uh, the uh, students' ability to come to the class and things of that nature. Now those, those operating revenues and also your MNO taxes are not directly pledged to the bonds. These are supported only by the, that one tax, uh, the, the, the debt tax. But all those things will be factors when they look at the overall operations of the college. But if we compare, for example, the college with other credits, for example, um, airports, which are under a pretty significant stress right now, um, any any um, city or special purpose district that has um, a sales tax credit or a hotel occupancy tax credit, those are under pretty significant stress right now. Uh, property tax supported um, debt is not really in the same camp, particularly, again, when you don't have any um, um, any um, uh, risk uh, of the change in sales tax like a city might, even though they have property taxes, they also use city uh, sales tax to support um, operations. So you're in a good position from that. Um, and then that finally I'll add that, it, that certainly this is an interesting and then different time and maybe there's some things that change a little bit. But in general, um, community college, college um, attendance is somewhat counter cyclical to the economy. So to the extent the economy is not doing so well in the fall, you actually could see an uptick in, in um, uh, attendance. Okay. What what are the bond uh, the rating agencies that you go to? Well, um, the three principal rating agencies we use are, are Moody's, S and P, and Fitch. And okay. we have historically, um, over the last number of years, really since the financial crisis, um, um, typically only solicited two of those ratings each time. Um, since the financial crisis, many investors do their own analysis and. It's still very important to have these ratings, but it's not necessarily uh, as important to, to get all three ratings. Although we'll we'll have to evaluate that again um, going into this transaction, just because uh, of the interesting and, and um, kind of unusual times that we're in. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Regent Rivas. Regent Salinas, do you have any questions or comments? <coughs> no, no, no. Thank you. And Regent Sherwood, do you have any questions or comments? No, thank you. Uh, Regent Sherwood, would you be willing to uh, make a motion to authorize issuance uh, on action item A of up to $25,266,739.88 in principal amount for Series 2020A for the purpose of financing a portion of the capital improvements by the voters at the November 14th bond election as stated in the action item on our agenda. Uh, yes, I will make that motion as it is stated. Thank you very much. Uh, Regent Adami, would you be willing to second that mo motion? Uh, I second the motion. Thank you. 
Is there anyone who has any additional questions or comments about the motion on action item A for the funding of the 2014 bond election remaining amount and unused funds? Hearing none, I will do a roll call vote. Uh, so please unmute yourself and be prepared to say uh, yes or no uh, if you uh, want to vote in favor or against that motion. Regent Adami. Yes. Regent Abrams. Yes. Regent Bennett. Yes. Regent Estrada. Yes. Regent Hutchison. Yes. Regent Rivas? Yes. Regent Salinas? Yes. Regent Sherwood? Yes. And I'm Regent Scott, and I vote yes. We have a unanimous vote to pass action item A. We'll move on to action item B, which is the possible action related to authorizing the issuance of $67,686,186.63 and the principal amount for series 2020B for the purpose of financing a portion of the capital improvements authorized in our November 2016 bond election as stated in our agenda under action item B. Uh, Regent Bennett, would you be willing to make that motion? Yes. Regent Abert, would you be willing to second that motion? Yes, I second. Are there any, thank you very much, both of you. Are there any other questions or comments related to this action item? Hearing none, I will do a roll call vote. Regent Sherwood? Yes. Regent Salinas? Yes. Regent Rivas? Yes. Regent Hutchison? Yes. Regent Estrada? Yes. Yeah. Regent Bennett? Yes. Regent Abert? Yes. Regent Adam? Yes. I'm Regent Scott. I vote yes as well. That motion passes unanimously as well. Uh, thank you all very much. Um, I realize that we had bond council who had some additional information, but I think we've we've done this a couple of times, so I think we are we were prepared to to move forward. So I want to thank you all for being on the call with us and for providing uh, very good information in our packet that um, I think was very helpful to all of us. Uh, Dr. Escamilla, do you have any other closing comments on that item? Uh, Madam Chair, just to echo your sentiments, thank you all. Um, to Tom and, and David for, for joining us. Uh, and again, uh, thank you regents um, and executive team members who have all come together today to uh, move us forward uh, in these very interesting times that I think uh, can yield some very beneficial uh, pricing uh, for uh, the investment made by our community in the Del Mar College. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, regarding our, the next item on our agenda was discussion of our upcoming calendar. Um, at this point in time, um, again, I'm sorry, was there a question there? Thank you. Uh, at this point in time, we are still planning uh, to, we will have a board meeting on Tuesday, May the 12th. We just don't know in what form that meeting will take. And at this point in time, we still have on our calendar the possible uh, retreat for the board on May 28th and 29th. Um, if that retreat cannot happen in person, we are looking at some alternative ways in which we will conduct that retreat. But it is important that we do our board self-evaluation uh, and be able to do Dr. Escamilla's evaluation, uh, given uh, all the things that are going on, we still have to move forward with those uh, governance responsibilities of the Board of Regents. So just be looking for information, and uh, Natalie and Dr. Escamilla and I will be uh, communicating with you. Uh, I shouldn't say it that way. Dr. Villarreal, Dr. Escamilla, and I will be communicating with you uh, about those upcoming activities. Uh, are there any last questions or comments from the Board? 
Dr. Escamilla, any last closing comments? Just, uh, I'd like to thank um, all the members of the Del Mar College team uh, that came together to put this uh, this uh, unprecedented format uh, for our Board of Regents meeting. Um, I, I just, it's been an amazing experience, and I look forward to uh, watching the team bar even further because that's their nature. So I imagine our next, our next uh, virtual meeting, should it be in May, I will look. Uh, slightly different, and uh, but I just wanted to say thank you to all the team. Uh, on behalf of the board, I would like to, to echo those comments. Uh, Jessica and Lorette, uh, your teams have done a great job, August. Your, your teams have all done a great job in, in putting together both the public information as well as the board support and the support for the public to be able to participate in this meeting as well. So with that, uh, I will adjourn the meeting at 2.01 p.m. Again, thank you all for participating. Stay well, stay healthy. Thank you.